In this example, we're going to replace the customer CSV file with uh, data we take from a MySQL uh, table. So let's remove this. That's customers. Uh, I'm also going to show you how we would create the new uh, the customer's metadata. So I'm going to delete the input customer metadata record. Um, so what we're going to do to start off with is to create a connection. Let's create that here. So if I go connections, and here you can see the types of connections we can create. Let's create a, uh, a database connection. In fact, I don't think you can see that. So I'm going to move it up so you get to see it. All right, now you can see it. So we'll say create database connection. Um, let's scroll things back down again now. So we'll give this a name, MySQL. Uh, let's specify our username, which is root. Uh, we'll specify the type of driver for the database, which is MySQL. And now we'll want to change here host name, which is the sort of the default stuff that comes out of Clover. To in my case, I'm just running this on localhost. And uh, the name of the database is called Clover. Uh, what have I called it? Clover QSG. And now we can press the validate connection. And it'll see if I've got that right first time or not. And I have. Uh, so now we click on finish, and this is will now appear. <coughs> let's move this back down a bit. Uh, this will now appear in the connections section, and that can be reused in my graph. Now let's create the metadata for the customers that we deleted. So we're going to go new metadata, and we're going to extract our metadata from the database. Uh, we've got a connection we've already defined. So we can just point it at that MySQL connection. It takes over all the parameters. Click on Next. And now it goes here and it finds the uh, databases. There's the QS, Clover QSG database with just one table in it called Customers. I'm going to select that and click Generate. Whatever I select, I actually have to click Generate. I could select here, by the way, some just fields rather than the whole table. But whenever I press Generate, it generates the SQL that's necessary such that, if I press Next now, Clover can actually work out what fields make up that um, uh, are composed and that will come back from that when that query runs. So there we've got those. We'll click on Finish, and that's it. So now we're ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll drag in a reader and we're going to take a DB input table and uh, let's configure this by double clicking on it and then we're going to say what's the name of the database connection well that's the MySQL one uh, and what query do we want to run well, let's just select where we can use this here if we want again I could use this as an aid so I can go customers generate select star from customers Okay, so that's going to generate our query. Now we're going to connect this edge to the input here. And we're going to select the appropriate metadata, which is now... Um, actually, I didn't uh, give that a, a nice friendly name. I normally would give that I for input. Forgive me, forgive me that. Um, let's put the debug on that line. Um, and let's just check here that this input is working correctly. Yep, you can see that's all mapping as we would want. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, run it. We'll put the, we'll just run it and see what happens. And there we are. We can see we've now got 91 records coming out of the MySQL table rather than out of, out of the uh, customer CSV. And we can inspect this line if we want to see how the data has come out. There we are. It looks the same. It's just come from a different data source. Um, and that's that. So again, we can that just shows how easy it is to mix and match different types of data source.